Okay, it is October 10th, 7.30 p.m. This is DNA Replication, Recombination, and Repair. Uh, okay, so let's start with the basics. The base pairing of DNA and the ability to separate the two strands enables replication, recombination, and repair. What we'll be covering today will be DNA replication, how it's coordinated between the DNA and the DNA polymerase, ATP, the helicases, topoisomerase, the primase, and the ligase, and the telomerase. Move that up slide then. Okay, so the DNA, just to get it started off, comes with various conformations. You'll see, um, because the sugars are not flat but envelope shaped, and the position can vary with the shape of the flap. Uh, you'll find A form and B form are your most common forms. B is the dominant form of the two. There is also a Z form, but it's not a common form, so it's not something we're going to be learning about. Okay. The, there are major and minor grooves of DNA in the sequence-specific hydrogen bonding groups. The sugars are not lined up exactly opposite each other, uh, creating the major and minor grooves, thus the large and small portions of the DNA. Uh, the inner hydrogen bonds holds the helix together, which is what you see on there, and this adenine, thymine, minor groove side. The outer H bonds can attract other molecules, including drugs, which is this region here on the outer side of the medication. Okay, so the major players in DNA replication. A helicase, which is used to separate double-stranded DNA into single-stranded bubbles. Um, it does what, uh, what a base or a temperature can also do to DNA. Um, Primase supplies the RNA primer for DNA polymerase, which is one of the major separating factors from uh, RNA replication and DNA replications. It does require the RNA primer. Uh, DNA polymerase, which incorporates new nucleotides in a 5' prime to 3' prime direction only, um, which is showing that only one strand is synthesized mm -hmm. continuously, uh, the other is synthesized discontinuously uh, through Okazaki fragments and other other combination methods in regards to that. Uh, there are two major DNA polymerases that we're going to be talking about is polymerase 1 and polymerase 3. Um, there is also topoisomerases which relieve the stresses that replication produces on the DNA winding. There's two main types that we're going to be covering in the lecture. Um, DNA ligase which connects the various DNA fragments on the um, lagging strand of the DNA. Uh, remember that copying is fast, faithful, and unidirectional. Okay, so when we look at the DNA polymerase in a basic symbol, you have uh, basically a finger shape. You see the fingers there, the palm there, and the thumb over there. Um, it basically grabs the DNA and places it in sort of the palm region there in the middle. The active side is shaped uh, like a hand in order to incorporate the DNA through the polymerase. Um, now what this does is that is where the incorporation of the new nucleotides occurs. Now this does occur in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction. Um, the activity of DNA polymerase requires DNA template with a primer and a primer with a 3' prime hydroxyl to show where to start. You can also remove bases through exonuclease activity. Um, you can remove it from the end of a strand only uh, to remove the unnecessary nucle nucleotides. Okay, so the DNA polymerase active site. The oxygens are going to be your red atoms, your nitrogen are blue, the white and yellow are proton proteins, excuse me, and orange is a nucleotide phosphide phosphate being added, which is what you're seeing here in this region here. This is showing the terminal phosphate. Um, the key reaction is on nucleophilic attack by the 3' prime hydroxyl on the uh, pyrophosphate bond, which is what you're seeing over here, the 3' prime attack right there. The two key magnesium or manganese ions in DNA polymerase are active sites that help line the substrates. Um, the green spheres are your metal ions, which are used to help align the substrates. Uh, the metal stabilizes and also pulls in to encourage the cleavage of the two um, various parts there. 
Um, occasionally, mistakes can be corrected by the DNA polymerase, as uh, we mentioned before. Uh, incorrect bases can be identified because they don't pair correctly in the system. So the exonuclease activity site um, of the DNA polymerase can be used to uh, take out, I guess you could say, the bad fragment of uh, DNA. Now, basically, you'll see at the exonuclease site, exonuclease activity, active site will notice that there is a misbonding, and the, uh, the misbonding uh, section will migrate to the exonuclease site, um, and then there will be cleaved off, and the replication can continue in the normal five prime to three prime direction. Okay, so the separation of the DNA strands requires energy and a helicase. Uh, DNA helicases are an energy requiring activity. Um, one domain of the helicase binds and hydrolyzes ATP to produce energy. The replication is energy consumptive process. I cannot strain that enough. A uh, second domain binds the DNA, sliding along and separating the strands. So the two strands, as you see there, there's nothing going on, they are bound, but when the ATP comes along, they can actually begin to move. The ATP is phosphorylated to ADP with a free phosphate group, but it is broken up and the DNA fragments are separated out. Excuse me, I'm clicking buttons there. Okay, so there's one thing to note as well is that there's overwinding and underwinding, which is possible with DNA when the DNA is wound or unwound. Think of it like a rope. If you were to wrap a rope up and then try to pull it apart when it's already wrapped, it doesn't unwind. Um, so the polymerase um, wouldn't be able to attack the wound up areas because they're just too tightly bound together, um, which are harder for the proteins to access, therefore slowing the whole replication down. Um, circular DNA is also subject to this over and under winding. You can still get the replication bubble, but uh, the circular DNA, it's not something we're going to see a whole lot of, but it is, it's found in plasmids, um, and extra chromal DNA, extra chromosomal DNA in bacteria, which are important for antibiotic resistance, as well as, you'll see a lot of that, and it comes into our uh, DNA, which is recombinant DNA, used for insulin and things like that. Uh, topoisomerase 1 is going to be your next thing that comes along to help alleviate uh, DNA ring strand. So what you'll see is uh, that the topoisomerase 1 comes in and cuts one strand, which allows the rotation about the strand, uh, allowing the ring strain to be alleviated, which is uh, thermodynamically favorable. There is no ATP required for this, but it is, um, it is inhibited um, by some cancer drugs, such as um, irinotecan, which is an enzyme. Camptothecan is another one that you want to look for in regards to similar drugs there. Um, conversely, there is topoisomerase 2, which uh, makes double-stranded breaks to alter the DNA. This is an energy-dependent required, energy-required process. What you see there is that the topoisomerase 2 will come up to the G segment of the DNA that's super wound. So it will go along there, and you can see it'll bind to the site, and the ATP will come in um, at the T segment. You know, the Nova Blason uh, can be used to block the ATP binding, which can prevent the total transcription of the medication because the DNA can't be unwound. Now it splits open the DNA when the ATP is bound. It pulls the two parts together, splits open the DNA, and allows the tightly bound DNA to go pass through the uh, opening created by the ATP binding. So when that happens, it releases the ring strain of the overwound DNA at that point. So to summarize, it cuts both strands, passing the rest of the molecule through the break, and then resealing the break once the other uh, DNA has passed through the, uh, open, the, the opening in the DNA. Now, uh, some human versions are inhibited by cancer drugs, the etoposamide, um, or bacterial versions targeted by some antibiotics, think ciprofloxacin, uh, things like that. 
Okay, and now on to DNA replication. So DNA replication begins with an RNA primer uh, prepared by a primase. So the DNA template is written there, 3 to 5 prime. Now the RNA primer will come in and bind at a 5 to 3 prime site on there, which allows the DNA polymerase 3, obviously works on the 3 prime, um, comes in and begins copying the new DNA. So then you have what is an, called an RNA, a DNA RNA hybrid with the RNA cap there, which is used as the, is the starting point, essentially, of uh, the DNA replication. Um, once the DNA synthesis is complete, the RNA primer is excised and taken off of the is taken off of the uh, strand of DNA. Excuse me. Okay, and then uh, just as we've been saying, DNA replication moves in one direction uh, at a time, but it does it in both strands. So obviously, in one direction, the leading strand, you're going to see a continuous stream of uh, uh, pieces of DNA being added at a time. Uh, the two strands, uh, though, will be oriented in opposite directions. Um, the other is copied in short segments called Okazaki fragments, which are then linked together by DNA ligase, which is what you'll see a little bit more detail later on. Okay, and I think we'll call it good for there.